Welcome. You're listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. Thank you so much for listening. Music created for the Bulldog Educator is by David Galvez. Podcast platform is through anchor.fm. Hi, listeners, and those of you that may be you want to create your own podcast. I need to tell you about a platform that I use and one of my favorite podcasts, Be the Bridge with Latasha Morrison uses, is Anchor. Anchor FM is free, totally free. It's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And then it does the heavy lifting for you. You can distribute your pot, it distributes your podcast so you can be heard on places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So if you're interested in making your own podcast, I highly encourage you to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's the way I did it. It's the way that Latasha Morrison with Build the Bridge did it. And it's the way many of the podcasts that I listen to do it. Go to anchor.fm. You won't regret it. Welcome to episode 14, season one of the Bulldog Educator with your host, Kirsten Wilson. And this episode 14 is I uh, working with some random thoughts um, that I have that I'm going to share at the beginning and then 10 things that I've learned in the past month in January. So the first thing, uh, the uh, random thoughts, and maybe these aren't exactly random um, because this part is very intentional. I am super appreciative of the listeners who have stuck with me. Um, I know that in my last podcast, I told you that I was going to be more intentional and I was going to be more consistent with posting podcasts. But um, if you live in the same uh, country I have and you've been Um, in the same places I've been um, in January, then you know that things have been a little wonky. And so my best intentions and best laid plans haven't exactly worked the way I planned. I'm actually right now recording this at the tail end of of what has been coined hashtag Snowmageddon 2021. And I am living right in the middle of about... uh, two and a half rounds. And one reason I say half two and a half rounds is that we got some ice um, last week, the end of the week. And then the snow started coming in early part of mid February. And then we got the second round midweek. And last night um, on top of the 10 inches we already had, we probably got another 10 or 11 inches. Now for you, those of you that are listening that live in the Midwest and in the North and are used to this, um, what I'll explain to you is that we don't have snow, snow plows. We don't normally get this kind of weather. Our houses are not designed or built for this kind of weather. So many of us are pipes bust. Um, and so it's all around uh, kind of a mess. But I've been very fortunate. My pipes haven't busted. We haven't lost electricity. And I've been able to stay nice and warm and toasty in my house. And so I'm very fortunate um, in comparison to many people that have been um, surviving Snowmageddon 2021. But on with that, moving forward, my intention is for us to begin posting more episodes to the Bulldog Educator. And um, I just want to be super honest that some of the reason there wasn't the consistent posting was um, due to some actual real roadblocks that came along. Life has gotten really busy with some things going on with my uh, regular job um, that has um, needed my attention. And then some imagined roadblocks. Um, I kind of went through a situation where I kind of felt that maybe I didn't really have anything that I needed to say in this forum because it was really already being said in other forums by other educators. But what I realized is that it may have been said before, but it hasn't been said the way I'm saying it. And so I'm going to continue my podcast because what I have to say is important. And for those loyal listeners that are listening, I appreciate you sticking with me. And I appreciate the fact that you value what I have to say. You value the different voices that I try to bring on here. And that moving forward, we're going to continue to have fun. 
and we're going to continue to find ways to make this relevant and meaningful to you. I also want to be extremely transparent and vulnerable with you guys that I got a little overwhelmed with the podcast and some of the different uh, things that I do for producing this and I let it get the better of me. I felt like certain things had to be done first before I could come on and do another episode. And what I realized is to heck with it. I'll do what I can when I can, and just hope that you guys will be gracious and understanding and flexible as I work through making this a better platform and accessible in different places. So thank you so much, and I'm going to do my best to stop undervaluing my worth and provide you guys with something that's amazing and beneficial to you and something that you want to share with friends and have discussions. So now moving on, I want to share with you some things that I learned in January. And yes, I do realize that it is February 18th, but I do feel like some of the things that I reflect upon in my learning in January are still relevant and worth sharing. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is that in January, I really took account of the fact that I'm not really good at taking a break and that I needed to find some ways to take a break from the busyness. Um, I also needed to kind of clean house um, with things that were kind of clogging up my ability to rest and relax. And that was um, basically kind of doing a cleansing of maybe some social media um, posts and, and, conversations that really were kind of toxic and weighed me down. And so I kind of, I I made some decisions to clean house in some places and to really provide the places and the spaces that I am to be a place that I can um, gain encouragement and they bring me energy instead of take it away from me. I also um, recognize that it was important for me to not allow myself to be in situations that encourage excluding people and utilize the device or the tool of dehumanizing in order to elevate themselves. Um, And so I have chosen to take myself out of situations like that. When I see it going on, I will identify it, recognize it, draw attention to it, but then remove myself from that situation because I don't want any part of that. And it's not how I want to be as a person. Another thing that I've learned in January, and this is the second thing, that sometimes rules and challenges that I set for myself are meant to be broken or you can break them and then go back and restart them. You don't you don't have to just throw the baby out with the bathwater. So in January, I took a break from sugar. I did a 30 day challenge that I wasn't going to eat sugar. And then on the third week in January, my husband and I took my daughter to Rockford University. And um, those of you that live in the North, you know, may know this place called Culver's. They have the most amazing frozen custard. Now I'm in the middle of a no sugar challenge, but I decided that I was going to experience this event of the frozen custard with my daughter who is going off to college next year and my husband, because this was an experience that we needed to have together. I don't regret it for a moment. So my 30 day challenge ended up being 29 days. I still did it for 29 days and I'm proud of that. And I'm also proud of the one day I ate the Culver's custard because it was amazing. So in addition to that, um, I also had this commitment that I was going to walk. I'm walking every single day, which um, right now with 20 inches of snow outside and no treadmill, um, that's kind of blown itself up. But in January, I experienced a tremendously horrible migraine. And I texted my walking partner, who was also my neighbor, and said, I'm still walking uh, because i got to do my walk for today because I'm walking every day. And she kind of had a reality check with me and she said, sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself is to not do the thing you think you're supposed to do. She said, you stay home, you rest, walking can wait. And I thought to myself, you know, sometimes we set ourselves a goal or we, we push ourselves to do something when really the best thing we could do for ourselves is to stop and rest. 
And so that's something that um, has really hit home with me that I need to give myself some a break. And sometimes the standard I hold myself to isn't healthy for me. The other thing that I learned in January is the amazingness of escapism through different um, uh, TV series, Netflix series, whatever you want to call them. And um, I also have realized I'm not a good person when I find a series to pace myself. Um, Schitt's Creek, um, I blew through that one way too fast. And now that it's all over, I'm really sad that I didn't pace myself. And you think I would have learned about that. But then what did I do? I watched Bridgerton. And I, I think I completed that in a weekend. I'm not 100% sure, but it was pretty quickly um, that I, from start to finish, had watched that entire thing. I've discovered the show Atypical. Oh, love that. And then um, I'm so glad to have back some of the shows that took a hiatus um, and before Thanksgiving. And I've been waiting on them. But I'm so glad to have This Is Us back on a pretty weekly basis. Um, my my tri trio of Chicago's, Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, and Chicago PD, The Resident, and The Good Doctor. And I do love a good medical series. I am impatiently waiting for Grey's Anatomy to come back. The Transplant, which if you have not watched that, it is an amazing series. Oh, love that series. I would love it. And I am, you know, Amazon Prime, if you're listening, if we could have another season of The Marvelous Miss Maisel. And uh, Netflix, anytime you want to bring back Ozark, I am all over that. Virgin River, I am just waiting with abated breath for the next season of that. Um, that was another series that I did not pace myself well and blew through that in uh, no time flat. And I have been waiting since July for the next season of Yellowstone. I don't know how they do it, but they torture me. I have been with them since season one, and there is too much time. Yellowstone, Creators, Paramount, there needs to be more seasons or more episodes in the season of Yellowstone. I'm just saying, just saying. But um, yes, so escaping through shows, I do love a good escape. And that's one of the things that I love to do. The other thing uh, that has um, been something that I've been working on, and this is not my first year to do it, um, but I've learned the practice of how important it is, and it really has hit home this January, is that creating that vision board and that list of 2021 goals, that instead of setting goals that are self-defeating or almost like, well, you didn't get this right last year, Wilson, so you better set this a goal this year. Instead, I'm looking at goals that really are self-encouraging. Um, one of those goals, and I love it because I'm going to coin the, I'm going to take the phrase that Tina Bogren uh, coined, which is drink the stupid water. Ah, uh, man, I know it when I drink that full 64 ounces, um, I do so much better, but man, I forget that I need to drink the stupid water because it's so good for me. So yeah, drink the stupid water. Uh, another thing that I discovered, I started intermittent fasting last year before the pandemic hit, and I had done it um, as a way for me to slowly lose a little bit of weight. But what it has done for me during the pandemic is that it has curbed my habit of stress eating. Because with intermittent fasting, I only have a small window in which I'm supposed to eat. And so I don't have that, um, that immediate, oh my gosh, I'm stressed. Let me, let me snack. Let me snack. And then I stack myself um, straight out of every um, clothing item I can fit into. Um, and so it has prevented me. And that has been so extremely important because let me tell you, this has been the year to stress eat if you were going to stress eat. But intermittent fasting has been my saving grace. And so I put that on my list as something that I want to continue to commit to as a healthy measure to keep me from eat, subconsciously eating without realizing that I'm eating because I'm trying to feed an emotion instead of address it. The other thing um, that creating this vision board has done is really helped me identify 
how my word of the year is going to come into play. And my word of the year this year is connect. And so for me, connect means that I'm going to be fully present in the moment for others. And um, to capture what someone else had chosen as their word of the year, which was also connect, they said for them connect was to listen like Jesus. And what they said along those lines is that Jesus listened not just to the words the person was saying, but he listened with his whole being, being fully present with that person, feeling their full emotion, their full um, just where they were, how they felt. And he did it with that fully present, full listening, not just half listening, not just listening to the words, but picking up on the entire context of what the words were being said from the human being that was speaking to him. And so that is one of the things that I really want to focus on in the way that I connect with others, that I'm being fully present for them, just like listening like Jesus. And so the other piece was that I wanted, that I really um, wanted to step into was that No longer was I going to self-reject when opportunities came to play, but I was going to go for it. And that leads me to my fifth thing that I I realized. By not self-rejecting, which I had several opportunities to put this into play in January, I found a new enthusiasm and excitement in who I am and what I do. Um, Because if I'm not self-rejecting, then everything's a little, why not? Let's try it. The other thing is, When I fail at something or I don't get picked for something that I have gone for, it actually doesn't feel as bad as what I thought it was going to be. I think one of the reasons that we self-reject sometimes is because we don't want that feeling of disappointment or that feeling of failure. And I got to tell you guys, it's not as bad as I thought it was. The other thing um, with by not self-rejecting is that I'm able to move forward with things. And I told told you guys a little bit about how I was struggling with um, getting this podcast going again. And there were some um, some um, unintentional barriers that had come into play. Um, I was overwhelmed, feeling undervalued. I um, also had some imagined roadblocks that really weren't there, thought that what I had to say and the things that I were saying were not that important. But what I realized is that that was self-rejecting and that I had to stop that. And by stopping that self-rejection, I've got a new enthusiasm for my podcast. i am also found a new enthusiasm and energy with um, me going back and getting some graduate classes. I'm actually working on a uh, master's certificate to add to my, uh, my my degree that I already have in educational leadership. And this is an online learning and teaching. And then um, my plan from there, um, and I've already started to make um, the steps towards this, is getting my PhD. And I'm super excited about that. In addition, by not self-rejecting, I'm connecting to create. And this Connecting to create has resulted in new friendships. I have um, purposefully uh, reached out to try to rekindle old friendships, which we all know has been such a challenge um, in this pandemic because you can't see people, you don't um, aren't able to connect with people, you can't travel to see others like you could, and so it seems like sometimes we lose connection. But by not self-rejecting, when I think I'm going to reach out to someone. I no longer say, I haven't talked to them for a long time. They probably don't want to hear from me. I reach out anyway because I'm not going to self-reject. In addition to that, by not self-rejecting, I am purposefully focusing on making others' lives better. Um, I want to find ways that by lifting others, we all rise. And so encouraging others, I'm hoping that through this process of not self-rejecting, that I'm going to invite guest speakers to come on here, um, as well as ask people to come and speak to my teachers. And you know what? What's the biggest risk? If you ask, what's the worst going to happen? They say no. Oh, big deal. You know, it's just a two, uh, two-letter word, and it's not that big a deal. So in addition to that, I've also learned that sometimes 
for positive results, you got to embrace the pain. Um, in January, I got my first dose of the COVID vaccine. And man, did that hurt like I mean, you know what? I thought a heavyweight champion had punched me in the arm. But one of the interesting things when I got the dose, because I have the privilege of being part of that um, group that gets the 1B group that got a dose because I'm an educator. Um, when we were all sitting there socially distanced in the pharmacy, a gentleman asked us, so why are you getting the vaccine? And um, he was really excited because he said, I am part of science. And um, I thought that was extremely noble um, because we all have the choice not um, to get the vaccine. And I, I started thinking about it and some other people shared. And I said, you know what? My first and biggest reason that I'm getting the vaccine is because I want to hug my mom without fear. I want to hug my mom and know when I hug her that I'm not going to make her sick or I can't hug her again. The other thing was that I get to be part of a community that's creating a herd immunity so that we can protect those that cannot get the vaccine. And I have three specific people that I'm thinking about that I know that I'm doing my job to protect them. Uh, two of them, one's a mother and a son who bo both have immune um, deficiencies um, where they cannot get the vaccine because their bodies don't have the ability to fight off uh, the virus that, um, you know, the vaccine, it doesn't work the same in their body as it does in mine. And it puts them in more peril. Um, but they need me to get it so that the world that we live in, they can continue to be in. Um, the other person that I got this vaccine for is a sweet little girl and her family who I have known for some time. When I used to run, I ran for her. Uh, her name is Cambria and her mom, Eden Lord. And they are such a sweet and dear family to me. And they, they constantly battle with Cambria and now her siblings, rare diseases. And these rare diseases um, are difficult to treat. And because of these rare diseases, she cannot always um, get the same treatment or the same medicines because they could harm her. And so um, I get the vaccine for her because I want for her to be able to have science focus on the rare diseases and not have to continue to fight this virus so that the doctors, the virologists can work on helping her as well. The seventh thing that I learned is I am not an expert in many things, but what I am an expert in is a, being a professional educator. And I will not speak for another group, no matter what the quote unquote experts say. I am not a doctor, so I won't speak, speak as an expert in, in a forum um, as a doctor and say, well, this is what the doctor said, because I am not a doctor. Let the doctor speak for that. I'm not going to speak I just let, as a legislator or a public servant, because I am not that. I am not going to speak as a, you know, as as an electrician or um, a specialist in that area, because that's not my expertise. But I am an expert when it comes to my field. And experts seem to be everything from doctors to lawyers to politicians. But when it comes to education and when people talk about education, it doesn't seem to matter what their background is. Everyone else is the expert in education except the educator. And I don't get that. I don't get how we're not respected in our field and we're not trusted for what we know and how we know how to educate children. And so for all those educators out there who are experts, professional educators in your field, continue to speak as experts. Do not let people speak for us because we know what we're doing. We know how to do it. And I don't know of one other profession that has pivoted in this pandemic and done such an amazing job and continue to keep the most important thing at the forefront. And that is our children. So continue to speak as experts in your field, as professionals in your field, because I am super proud of you. You matter. Your voice matters. Continue to speak out. The other thing I want to talk to you about is this little known thing that I've discovered. 
is my fur babies. My fur babies have become my biggest supporter of my self-care. And you are probably thinking now, how is that possible? Well, my fur babies are the source of a lot of my laughter. They bring me so much joy and they make me laugh on a regular basis. They also provide me comfort. I have a husband who is um, a salesman and travels quite a bit. And so them being able to curl up and cuddle up with me provides me so much comfort. Um, And just especially since now we can't hug others or come into contact with others, that that comfort comes from my, my fur babies. My fur babies are also extremely good at knowing when it's time for me to get up and coming and sitting on top of me. And while sometimes I have to push them off because time is of the essence, sometimes I will sit there a little bit longer and rest and enjoy in just being in the power of now and being in the presence and enjoying the present, which is such an important thing that um, the author of The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle, speaks about not looking back into the past or looking forward into the future, but being fully present in your being at this moment. So the ninth thing I want to talk about that I learned is that you can be sad at what you've lost and excited about what you have discovered in the same space. And what I'm talking about there is this year. I have had a loss of kid events my kids have. But at the same time, I've had more time with my kids. We've had the loss of eating out at some great food places. But in place of that, at our house on Wednesday nights, we have mac and cheese night. Uh, We've had the loss of live theater, which in this house is so important because my daughter is a theater buff and she is an actor. Um, But at the same time, I've seen her um, innovate and create within these constraints And she's learned how to direct and act and live video um, for for different activities and different things. And it's just it's really secured her and her confidence in what she can do because she's realized no matter the platform, she can still practice her art. Uh, I've also we've lost the live events like band concerts and choir concerts. But at the same time, because now they're live streamed, I can share these live streamed events with family and friends who want to see my kids and what they're doing and celebrate with us. And they may not have had that opportunity had it been a face to face live event rather than a live streaming event. So there's some things that we've really gained, um, even though there's been loss at the same time. And the next thing that I want to share with you that I learned was that I've discovered I'm kind of a nerd. I love learning. I have started um, a master's certificate like I spoke of earlier in the fall of 2020 for online teaching and learning. And I missed it when we took our break over Christmas and was so excited when we started back in mid-January. I'm working right now in a, a media design class and both this class and the class I took for Universal Design for Learning connect to my job and help me keep pushing both myself and then providing excellence for, for um, professional development for my teachers because it also has helped me coach and support my teachers to make learning awesome for my students. In addition to that learning, oh my gosh, podcasts. I cannot say enough about podcasts. And I love all kinds. I love from all kinds of perspectives. Um, The Bible recap, um, I'm on my second round of reading through the Bible in a year and it keeps me on track there. And then Brene Brown's Unlocking Us. I cannot say enough about that. The Armchair Expert, that sounds fun with Annie F. Downs. And she was my original podcast that I first started listening to when I started discovering podcasts. Be the Bridge, the Black Belt podcast, and then my new newest couple of podcasts are The Lazy Genius and then Dare to Lead, also with Renee Brown. Just some incredible things that I've come across. Other ways that I learn are through books. Um, I've learned a lot about the Enneagram through, through several books on the Enneagram. 
um, as well as others I mentioned with Eckhart Tolle and Brene Brown and Annie F. Downs that I've read. I come across a lot of content and I love to share it. And that's one of the ways I can uh, continue to live out my word of the year um, of connect by sharing with others what I'm learning. I want to share the ideas that come to me, but a lot of times they come to me in such times I can't record or write them down. You wouldn't, ima you can't imagine how many ideas have come to me in the shower or, or in my drives in the car or when I'm walking where I can't write them down, but then they never get into a podcast. But I do promise you, I have some things coming, including UDL, um, more about instructional model and student voice and choice. But I want to know what content is important to you. What do you want to hear? How can I use this platform to better help us as educators and people? Please reach out through social media or through this platform and tell me what you'd like. I'd really like to know if there's something more you want to hear. So please let us know with the Bulldog Educator so that we can share more on this platform that's relevant to you. Thanks so much for listening to the Bulldog Educator. This is Kirsten Wilson. Have a great night. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Bulldog Educator, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. You can find The Bulldog Educator on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at the Bulldog EDU. That's at the Bulldog EDU. You can also find us and content related to education and this podcast on our blog at thebulldogedu.org.